بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We continue reading from the introduction of the author uh, I'm at the bottom of page 9 from my edition and this will be page 11 in the PDF The author quotes Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah وقال رحمه الله تعالى ومثل أئمة البدع من أهل المقالات المخالفة للكتاب والسنة والعبادات المخالفة للكتاب والسنة فإن بيان حالهم وتحذير الأمة منهم واجب باتفاق المسلمين حتى قيل للإمام أحمد بن حنبل الرجل يصوم ويصلي ويعتكف أحب إليك أو يتكلم في أهل البدع فقال إذا قام وصلى واعتكف فإنما هو لنفسه وإذا تكلم في أهل البدع فإنما هو للمسلمين وهذا أفضل Then Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah continues فبين أن نفع هذا عام للمسلمين في دينهم من جنس الجهاد في سبيل الله إذ تطهير سبيل الله ودينه ومناهجه وشرعته ودفع بغي هؤلاء وعدوانهم على ذلك وبغي هؤلاء وعدوانهم على ذلك واجب على الكفاية باتفاق المسلمين ولولا من يقيمه الله لدفع ضرر هؤلاء لفسد الدين وكان فساده أعظم من فساد استيلاء العدو على من أهل الحرب فإن هؤلاء إذا استولوا لم يفسدوا القلوب وما فيها من الدين إلا تبعا وأما أولئك فهم يفسدون القلوب ابتداء So Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says talking about the people of innovation and people making statements or having positions that are contradicting the Book of Allah and the Sunnah or that are performing acts of worship that are contradicting or going against the Book of Allah and the Sunnah He says concerning these people Verily clarifying their status and warning the Ummah from them is an obligation by consensus of the Muslims and it, and it was even said to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, a man is fasting, praying and doing i'tikaf in the masjid is he more beloved to you or uh, him speaking against the people of Bid'ah or is that more beloved to you uh, or him speaking against the people of Bid'ah so Imam Ahmad responded saying if he is praying, doing Qiyam al-Layl and praying and doing i'tikaf verily that is for himself the benefit of this is limited to his own self but if he's talking against Ahlul Bid'ah for verily that is a benefit for all of the Muslims and that is better so I'd like to pause here and comment on the statement of Imam Ahmad what we have to understand from the statement of Imam Ahmad is that warning from falsehood in our Sharia is a matter which is an absolute obligation there's no way around it and it is a matter which has benefit for the Ummah what the Imam Ahmad did not state is that this matter is like open season and it is for everybody to get involved and that due to the slightest ambiguity it is for any one of us to start making hashtags and messing up the dunya, spreading doubts amongst the people and causing confusion. There's a big difference between these two things. If we consider this matter to be an obligation from the Sharia, ah, well, just like any other obligation of the Sharia, ah, there are rulings that have to be followed. There are conditions that have to be fulfilled and there are preventions that have to be removed. So, <clears throat> in this book right here, we shall have like a case study on how this is done. And you shall be able to compare how Sheikh Abdul Razak Hafidahullah Ta'ala has applied the speech of Imam Ahmad right here. You'll be able to compare that with what other people are doing in this regard. So Ibn Taymiyyah says, anna so in English, so Ibn Taymiyyah says that Imam Ahmad states that. The benefit of this is general to the Muslim for their religion and it is uh, a category of jihad fi sabilillah. 
For verily, cleansing the path of Allah and his religion and his manhaj and his legislation and uh, repelling the transgression from these people is an obligation that is an obligation of kifaya, fard kifaya as we say, which means that it has to be done not by everyone, by a group of people in a sufficient manner. That's it. And this is a matter of consensus amongst the Muslims. And if it wasn't for people that Allah has put in place to repel the harm of these people, the religion would have been destroyed. And the destruction or the corruption of the religion would be worse because of these people than the corruption that comes from an enemy taking over the lands of the Muslims through war. For verily, an enemy, when they take over Muslim lands, they do not com corrupt the hearts and what's in it from the deen. They only, they corrupt the land and will follow from that is the corruption of the hearts. Taba'an, following up. However, Ibn Taymiyyah says, the, these people, meaning the people of innovation, their corruption goes straight to the heart and to the deen. So we shall stop here for this class. In the next class, we shall look at what the author said concerning some of the positions that people have nowadays uh, on this matter, warning. They claim that warning has more harm than good. And uh, we shall also see what Ibn Taymiyyah has to say in this regards. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ilan, tastaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk.